When a young man's love for his pet python, Tiny, takes an unexpected twist, it results in a shocking tragedy. The coroner's verdict may surprise you, as it turns out that Tiny's affectionate hug was the fatal embrace. Like and subscribe. This is Fierce. Dan Brandon was more than a snake enthusiast. He was a true herpetologist with an unbridled love for these fascinating creatures. Nestled in his Hampshire, England bedroom, he harbored not just a collection, but a genuine passion for his 10 snakes and 12 tarantulas. These animals weren't mere showpieces, they were his heart's delight. His fascination with reptiles took root at the tender age of 10, watching documentaries that held him spellbound. By 15, he welcomed his first snake into his life, and from there, his bedroom sanctuary evolved into a thriving menagerie. Despite the abundance of creatures, Dan cared for each one meticulously. Their tanks were state-of-the-art, and he fed them only the finest fare. Occasionally, he let them explore his bedroom, showcasing his expertise in herpetology. Among his beloved pets, Tiny held a special place in his heart. This 2.4-meter African rock python was a giant among snakes, capable of growing up to 4 meters or even more. Native to sub-Saharan Africa, these non-venomous behemoths typically feasted on everything from rodents and birds to monkeys, warthogs, antelopes, and yes, even crocodiles in the wild. To Dan, Tiny was like his baby, and he treated her that way. When he first got her, she could fit right in his hand. But as time passed, she grew and grew, and she eventually reached a whopping eight feet in length, all muscle. Pythons don't just constrict anything they see, it takes a lot of effort, and they typically do it when they're planning to have a meal. They're pretty smart, and they can sense when the animal's heart stops, and that's when they loosen their grip. As Tiny grew in both girth and length, Dan couldn't help but notice her increasing strength. He had to change the way he handled her. Gone were the days of casually draping her around his neck like he did with his other snakes. It was just too risky. Although Tiny wasn't the type to squeeze him out of aggression, she sometimes wrapped herself around him, seeking warmth and comfort. But Dan knew better than to let her do that. He realized that if she ever coiled around him too tightly, he'd have to start peeling her off, starting with her tail. The potential danger was just too great. Then came that fateful day on August 25, 2017. Dan had just returned home from work. He worked as a landscaper. His usual routine was to head straight upstairs to change before coming back down. But on this evening, everything changed. Shortly after he went upstairs, there was an ominous thud that echoed through the house. Strangely, there were no cries or shouts from Dan afterward, which raised alarm bells for his parents. His dad decided to investigate. The details of the incident remain somewhat unclear, but it appears that Dan was handling Tiny, as he normally did. He had draped her across his shoulders, and he lovingly stroked her silky smooth skin. Tiny, with her flickering tongue tasting the air, started to grip him a little tighter. Sensing potential danger, Dan began to gently pull her off. Then, for reasons unknown, Tiny suddenly coiled her muscular body around Dan. Eight feet of pure snake power pressed tightly against his body, crushing his blood vessels and restricting oxygen to his brain. In mere seconds, Dan began to feel faint, like he was about to pass out. And then it happened. The world plunged into darkness, and Dan slumped to the floor. Startled by the fall, Tiny quickly released her grip and slithered off. She found a corner of the room and curled up, leaving behind a scene of shock and terror. When Dan's dad cautiously pushed open the bedroom door and took in the alarming scene, his heart sank. There lay Dan, sprawled face down on the floor, and Tiny, his cherished python, was conspicuously absent from her tank. Panic seized him as he bellowed for Dan's mother to dial emergency services. She raced upstairs, joining the frantic effort to revive their son. But Dan remained unresponsive. Eight agonizing minutes later, paramedics arrived, their valiant efforts overshadowed by the grim reality. The 31-year-old Dan couldn't be saved. Meanwhile, Tiny had seemingly retreated to a corner of the room, her demeanor strangely tranquil. The events leading to Dan's tragic demise remained shrouded in mystery. The coroner's examination pointed to asphyxiation by the snake, 
but the hows and whys remained elusive. Oddly, there were no telltale marks around Dan's neck or chest, no bruises, no signs of trauma. However, snake expert and professor Scott Bobak brought a new perspective to the table. He challenged the conventional wisdom, asserting that constrictors like Tiny typically didn't dispatch their prey through asphyxiation. Rather, it was more often attributed to cardiac arrest. The eight-foot-long python, Bobak explained, could swiftly restrict blood flow to Dan's brain, plunging him into unconsciousness and triggering cardiac arrest due to lack of oxygen and blood flow to the heart. As the investigation deepened, another snake expert and veterinarian named John Cooper joined the fray. His focus, Tiny's recently shed skin. A careful examination revealed no signs of struggle from Dan, no telltale fingernail marks hinting at a desperate fight for his life. With a cautious hand, John moved to gently lift Tiny and return her to the confines of her tank. But Tiny, still as spirited as ever, struck out defensively. It begged the question, could this seemingly unassuming python be responsible for Dan's untimely demise? The coroner, however, was hesitant to pin the blame on Tiny's aggression. Dan bore no bite marks on his body, a conspicuous absence if the snake had indeed launched a predatory assault, clamming her jaws onto him while constricting, which would typically leave a clear bite mark. The prevailing theory was that Tiny might have been displaying an eerie form of affection toward her owner. Yet reptiles aren't known to express affection as conventional pets do. Pythons, considered somewhat unpredictable, can develop bonds with their handlers, though distinct from the human-dog or human-cat connections. If not in a predatory mood, pythons might tighten their grip if they perceive a threat. A sudden movement by Dan, for instance, might have prompted Tiny's instinctual response, much like how they tighten their coils when a tree sways or a branch snaps in the wild preventing a fall. Could it be that Tiny, if only momentarily, felt insecure and unwittingly hugged her beloved owner to the brink of death? There were faint signs of a rib fracture on one of Dan's ribs, possibly from Tiny's coiling. Months later, Dan's parents, struggling to manage the ever-growing python, made a poignant choice. Unable to put Tiny down, despite her suspected involvement in their son's death, they decided to rehome her. Their choice led Tiny to the National Center for Reptile Welfare at Hadlow College in Tunbridge, Kent. In the end, the shadow of mystery still looms over the incident, and only Tiny knows the chilling secrets that unfolded that fateful evening in Dan's bedroom. <laughs>